Okay, we're gonna start the big time analysis on pretty much everything in the market. I'm gonna be looking at all types of markets. We're gonna look at the bond market. We're gonna look at the crypto market. We're gonna look at the Forex market. Um, here's all the pairs that we can look at. We're gonna look at some stocks. We're gonna look at the indices. Uh, we're gonna look at everything, <laughs> gold, all that jazz. The first thing we're gonna look at is uh, Bitcoin because that is kind of a hot topic right now. And um, we're gonna look at a couple charts with Bitcoin. So, um, because it, the whole market is kind of in an interesting, an interesting spot. So uh, first thing that we're gonna look at though, is we're going to look at the moon cycles or it's called moon phase. If you type in moon on the indicators, it'll come up. But uh, I have the growing and waning moon phases, like I have that part off. Um, I just have it showing the full moon, which is this color, and the new moon, which is this color. So what I've noticed, which is just, I have no idea how this is even playing out at all. But you can almost back it up for a while, and you can see that the full moons, like I said, the full moon is almost a bottom indicator. And there's like an accumulation phase before a full moon and then it rises up and then it rises up, it rises up, it rises up. I mean, I, I don't believe in astrology. Um, but should I, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I am not here to sell this indicator or even uh, you can see right here on this one, it was kind of wrong a little, but then it ended up running up. Um, another one I saw kind of over here, it was kind of not exactly right, but then it ended up running up. So I I personally, I saw this dude on like TikTok or uh, YouTube talking about the moon phases. And he said that quote that I, I, I put, he said, JP Morgan said, uh, millionaires don't study astrology, billionaires do. And I was like, that's interesting. Let's see if there's any indicators in the moon phases. Um, yeah, so what we're getting right now is a, um, a, a full moon that just happened uh, yesterday, I believe, or, or, or it's like happening right now, uh, tonight. So is this gonna be a pop? A bottom you know of course we're not I'm not saying it, it calls the very bottom because obviously it just rides up rides up rides up it didn't even ride up that much right there but what I want to do is I kind of want to look at the percentages of how much it has gone up from its very low to its very high um, of course right here you can see how like when you kind of zoom out it's it, it doesn't move it just drops down a little bit so it looks a little better um but here you can see this one didn't call that um it it after this it ran up only five percent but then it had a big drop uh this one was very similar um it had um you know a actual big move down instead of big move up but what i'm what i'm really seeing is just the volatility that comes with these cycles it's not necessarily the uh, the direction in my opinion it's more of the volatility that's coming with it which is just it's tripping me out because this is something that i have never really studied but i mean as you get into it you know this new moon uh volatility comes in a full moon volatility comes in uh new moon volatility comes in, full moon i mean there was some volatility that come in so what we're i mean it's not like we're expecting volatility to come in right now but it's just something to look out for i guess it's something to watch and in 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 fact i want to go back into the last bull cycle the last bull run we had and just see how accurate it was or just see if it was okay that's interesting all the very top not called it, but there was a new moon at the top here. Volatility comes in. Full moon. That's just crazy. Yeah. I mean, accumulation and then boom. Some reaccumulation. 
I don't know. It's something that y'all should go look at as well. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time looking at the moon phases. But yeah, you can see the last uh, the last bull run. It definitely was doing similar similar things at the bottom. It was kind of showing bottom full moons, top uh, new moons. That's just weird. If you've seen anything like this, throw it in the chat and tell me like you're, you know astrology and this is nothing new to you. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go check out the S&Ps. So we're going to go look into to see how it looks at the like the NASDAQ. And I have a lot on here. So we'll keep that on. That actually, that looks good still. Um, we're going to hide the drawings. <laughs> Interesting. The volatility. Hmm, very interesting. So these new moons are like tops for sure in the NASDAQ. Like a moon. Man, it's very interesting. It's super interesting. Um, DXY. And this analysis, guys, this is going to be something that um, we're going to look at everything, right? We're going to learn a whole lot today. The dollar... Not as much, I would say. Very interesting. So, something to look at the moon phases indicator. Some people can't join the chat or the, uh, huh, I'm not sure. The Zoom, we know why. Let's see, I'm not getting any, um, like, saying that there's no one let me uh drop another link and see let me copy the invite link again one more time and then here we go i'm gonna drop it in here and the people that can't get in hopefully uh that new link will work i'll also just uh, erase the one that i had and i'll drop the new one in the uh, next wave chat just so maybe that um, <clears throat> will help. Okay. Um, for the people who are on, though, uh, and I'm not gonna waste everyone's time. We are recording, so they will definitely be able to see what's good. All right. So let's go back to the crypto market. Let's go back to cryptos. And one thing um, for anyone who doesn't know, this is the um, the CME crypto chart, and we're gonna take the means off. The, the difference between like the CME chart or like Bitstamp or Coinbase or all the other brokers that you can you can use up here when you when you go to crypto. Um, and if I just type in like BTC, all these other um, brokers, they're gonna go throughout the weekend. They're never gonna stop. The CME chart is what the institutions and um, big players are gonna be looking at just um, Recently, they're allowed to be, uh, get into this market. And so um, this is the actual uh, chart, I guess, that, they're, that they are going to be, to be really playing off of. They can't play on the weekends uh, unless they want to play personally, right? So this is an important chart to watch at all times if you are uh, really a crypto uh, investor or day trader, regardless, whatever. Um, it, it will have gaps in the market because the weekend closes. And um, so it's just a, a really, really cool chart to uh, take note for. Uh, this is one I like to analyze on as well, just like I said, because it is a little bit more important. The price is gonna be the same during the weekday, but on that week. So let's go ahead and look at this uh, from the month it closed on the same, right? So last month it was extremely bearish when we had this just marked down. And um, this is the 2001 low right here. Uh, this price right there. So we'll mark that off just so we can see the uh, price that, you know, we've broken that. We have broken the 2021 low. The 2020 low is way down here. Yeah, I don't, I really don't expect price to break that. We're going to go, uh, another thing, logarithmic chart is going to help it uh, look a little bit easier to read whenever there is a big move in price. If there's ever a 
If you ever hear someone say the word parabolic, change your chart to a logarithmic instead of just normal. Okay, you see how it just looks out of whack? Because the X axis now is changed to adjust it. When you go logarithmic, it adjusts this X axis to make it a little bit easier to read. Um, just do the fibs, it's gonna look a little bit weird, right? Because it's looking at six is way up here. Okay, get the log off of this a bit normal, right? So if my chart looks a little bit weird, it's because I'm on a logarithmic scale. Um, but right now, this is what uh, we're looking at for, for the point, right? We have a swing swing high marked with the fib. We have hit an interesting fib level. We have been saying since the market was way up here, when the market did swing uh, and we drew these fibs, that this is an okay price to start dollar cost averaging. Um, 23 is another one and 18 is another one. But for me personally, what I've noticed in the past is the crypto market has dipped a lot more than um, just just this. So that's what um, we're gonna go ahead and look at that over here on this other crypto chart that I have. Um, I have it marked up a little bit differently, I believe. Perfect, yeah. Um, and if any of y'all have questions or anything in the chat um, or questions, drop it in the chat. It's just a live analysis. We're going live off the top. Okay, so, and here are these, these points, 2021 high, 2020 low. Um, I have the fibs just drawn. So this is the 78.6 of the swing. Hey Bubba, hold on, my dog's right here. Go ahead and get up there. All right. And then this is the 78.6 of the total move, right? So uh, 78.6 is just the, the number we like. Uh, you know, 70% is, is good as well. It's just going to be right around here at the 20K. But um, we're, we are expecting more towards the 80% of the, of the total retrace. I just want to show you all how it is, it is pretty much done that every time. You can see the last big bull run it had um, from the top to the very bottom, it dropped 84%. Um, so it's it's already happened even it's macro bull run it made so it, it made a big move up it came down 72 percent so uh, a good amount there that wasn't the big one but um here's another big run that it had uh, 86 percent retracement right and like i said i'm on a logarithmic chart so uh, these moves don't look like an 86 percent retracement but that it is and then again um, there was a, a, a bear market here that we really don't have a lot of data on but there was a deep a deep retracement there too and I believe it's actually right here and we can get it. it's here so another 75 percent so this thing retraces big time it's part of the um, it's part of the game you are involved in this asset and it's the one of the most emotional currencies, asset classes, whatever you want to call it. And um, it's it's probably going to come down to these levels, guys. And if anything happens to us to the stablecoin tether, it's really going to go down. And people are going to be really scared. Because I don't know if y'all see what happened to Luna. Let me lower this music down a little bit. All right, I don't know if y'all saw what happened to Luna, but this thing was an instant bust, right? Instant bust, way up here at 120 bucks, basically, a couple weeks ago, and now it's down trading below. I mean, it's dead. It's dead, guys. So um, it's because of their stable coin. There's some algorithmic, uh, you know, I don't know the whole story, to be honest. I don't remember. I watched a couple YouTube videos on it, but some crazy stuff. And there's some talks about that could happen with Tether as well. Um, I'm not sure. We'll see. Uh, if you don't know what Tether is, here's the uh, Tether dominance chart. And when this thing goes up, Bitcoin goes down pretty much. It's, uh, we don't need to get too far into it. Let's get that there. And right now, 
what's going on is it's making all 10 miles. So the tether dominance, when tether dominance rises, Bitcoin drops. And it's because people are moving their Bitcoin, taking it off Bitcoin and moving it into tether, basically the stable coin um, of the market. If the stable coin isn't stable anymore, though, I don't know what's going to happen. I personally think right now uh, we're going to see this correction. And once we get into this area where we broke through the all time highs, we're probably going to see another move on uh, on Bitcoin. So uh, you can see right here, we'll do a little comparison. And where's that at? But we used to be right here. Did they change it on me? There it is. Uh, let's throw Bitcoin on there. And you can just see the inverse, right? And so um, if I'm saying this is going to come back down a little bit and then go up possibly, I'm looking for the opposite on Bitcoin. I'm looking for it to come up a little bit maybe. Or, you know, not necessarily come up. You see how this has came down and this is like sideways? I could do that. I could just keep going sideways um, and just more of a corrective market. And then once this gets into this area, it could be a trigger moment, right? It could be a, a time where this thing has gone sideways and um, now it's ready to go down again. Or maybe it'll go up into this bearish flag and then it'll come down again, right? So I just wanted to show the, the comparison between these two. I'm watching this for sure. Um, if I have my eye on this and if I take off this guy and I see if there's any divergence on this there is no divergence yet so that's what I want to see I want to see some divergence as it gets down here I want to see that this bull flag momentum is starting to change so the crypto prices um, we are expecting them to go lower possibly but I want to also make a case for a more of a macro position um not even just um watching for for this right here um and i've talked about this before the wyckoff um accumulation pattern and so i'm going to take this 2021 low off but just know that we're in that area we're in that you know there's no point in taking it off right <clears throat> all right so what we have here is a pattern called an acute it's starting to to form an accumulation pattern and I'll just put this here okay this right there is called the preliminary support we come down and we make a test we're forming this range here and I expect this to come down a little bit lower make another test come back up into this range another dip down and that could be the final of that little range that I'm I'm talking about now, we've already seen this part of it. I want to really show y'all what I'm talking about, if y'all don't know. So we're gonna go actually, um, I should have a picture of it right here in my chat. All right. Let me know if y'all can see that I have this one. Come on now. Drag this. It's not. I don't know why. All right. <clears throat> Why cough? H static. And we're going to go to the real website. I'm going to drop this website in the chat because um, this is something everyone should study. <clears throat> um, we're, I'm looking at this right now, at least um, just for now. And if you have <laughs> my eyes are like burning right now, holy crap. So I'm looking at it like this and um, the PS right here. OK, we, we drop, we, we pull back, we drop down, make the SC, we pull back, we drop down the SC. AR automatic rally automatic rally we pull down for the st we pull down for the st 
We come up and we break a little bit higher than the automatic rally. We come up and we break a little bit higher than the automatic rally. So, I mean, we don't ever know what's going to happen in price. No one does. But this right here is almost picture freaking perfect to um, to not point out, I guess, right? It's it's literally the exact after, and, and if, if you start to read these, this is when it gets like, we're gonna go into it, no one reads this shit. I'm gonna teach y'all what this stuff means, okay? The PS, the preliminary supply. And, and this is good for me too, because um, just marking it off and, and seeing the pattern over and over and over again, so the preliminary supply, and we're gonna bring volume into it to confirm everything that we're saying. It says after a prolonged, uh, where substantial buying begins to provide pronounced support after a prolonged, prolonged down move. Volume increases in price spread wide and the price down move may be approaching its end. So in English, what that means is uh, substantial buying. Okay, we know what that means. The bulls begin to provide a support. We know what support is. So they begin to provide some type of buying that comes in after there's been a prolonged down move. So after a big move down, buyers come in and, and give it a balance, basically. And this is supposed to be supported with increasing volume and, and, and price spread widens. So when they say price spread widens, that just means the candles are big. So big volume, big candles. Um, signaling that the down move may be approaching its end. So we're gonna go here. And we're gonna look here and you can see that we had big candles with big volume of signaling that the down move is ending. And you're starting to see the move up. That's the support. Move up after a long down move, a long down move. So that's why I'm calling this the TS. And then we have the SC, so the selling climax point at which widening spread and selling pressure usually climaxes and heavier panicking selling by the public is being absorbed by the larger larger professional interests at or near the bottom. Often price will close well off the low meaning a wick and reflecting the buying by the larger interests, right? So we know a wick means buying. So in English, basically means the candles get big again and this is signaling the end of the down move, there's going to be a uh, big volume again. It doesn't say that, but there's usually a big volume again. And it's just because there's a lot of participants. There's people trying, there's dumb money trying to sell still while the big money is buying. So that's just a lot of people right there and that's gonna cause a lot of volume. And you can see right here, we're getting this move down, big move down. This is the uh, SC or yeah, SC. All right, and we'll just go here, here, and make that the SC. And this is all on crypto still. We're all on crypto. I'm going in today. If you want to get off and go get a drink, smoke a blunt, come back, I'm still going to be on, right? All right, because this is what I do. I got all day. Okay, um, we're on, looking at the automatic rally now, right? This occurs because intense selling pressure has greatly diminished, all right? A wave of buying easily pushes prices up. This is further fueled by short covering. So short covering means you're getting out of your shorts, you have to buy the market back. Uh, the high of this rally will help define the upper boundary of the accumulation trading range, TR. So um, this basically means that it is a uh, just a, a relief. Uh, it's it's, it's kind of automatically gonna happen because it's been selling so hard and you're just gonna see a natural kind of sell off again. Um, and that's right here with this AR. So I'm gonna throw this right here, automatic rally. And then we get the move down, boom, move down. Mm, ST, secondary test, uh, in which price revisits the area of the SC to test the supply and demand balance in these levels. If the bottom is to be confirmed, volume and price spread should be significantly low, basically. Okay, so the, Price spreads, we shouldn't be seeing big candles coming into that. We should be seeing kind of lower candles, AKA some people like to look at a flag right there, right? Um, and then the, the volume should be low on that flag, right? And we're talking right here. It should, you see how this is a flag pattern? 
Um, and so we're gonna check this right here and right there. You see how the candles are a lot less spread uh, body and the volume is low. Volume is low down here. So that's everything is, is confirming to the T on this. Um, and then we get to move up a little bit above the AR. So we get to move a little bit above the AR, just like that. So is this going to play out and continue the exact pattern? I have no idea. But what I'm really looking for, because I don't care if it's perfect pattern, what I'm going to look for is two more tests below this low. Because I don't care really if it goes up here again i don't i'm not i don't really know how i'm gonna play that um but because it could it could still like you know come around and, and do this again and then and then what happens if it does that am i gonna think it's invalid no you know what i'm saying it's just it could just the fractal isn't always going to be perfect but i'm waiting for another test here and it could go i'm telling you guys this thing could test way lower and it could be a little longer than we think but we are not bullish yet just like I said in that other um, that other post on on my channel, there's been some patterns going on with with the accumulation. I don't even think this thing is going to be ready for a couple of years. This move right here is going to be a, a pattern that brings price up into you know an area around this area. Just that's what we're, we're really looking for to come up to. So 40k, maybe 50 maybe back up to the top of this range but ultimately this thing probably has a whole nother accumulation way down here and and, and i don't i don't know if it's going to go to 38 i highly doubt that but 10k let me show everyone something real quick 10k we'll put the volume on for um everything no that's not This is the volume for the whole market. And the POC is considered the point of control where the most traded volume was at. And that's all the way at 1,400. But you can see some other volume that comes in that should hold as some support at very, you know, I swear if price gets down here, if you don't like sell your truck and you know about Bitcoin, you don't sell your life <laughs> uh, guys, you know it's gonna come up again. But either way, we're I'm I'm holding. I'm I'm thinking the 10k range should be four. Like if it gets below 10k, I don't think it'll be there very long. I think there will be accumulation at 10k based off of this. Now you bring a little bit less price, just the last two bull runs in, and that comes up to that almost 10k price. Right, so the last two bull runs, the most traded price has been at 88k. Now, if you just bring in the last bull run, this comes up a little bit more to 10k. So, the last bull run, the most traded price was close to that 10k price, and that's what I'm going to be looking at. All right, there's a lot of volume there, and this isn't me sh guessing. This is it showing, right? And you can see though, you can even, you don't even need this X axis volume. You can see how high the volume was over here and just draw it over to the right, boom. Um, and then uh, again, what was I gonna say here? Oh yeah, um, you see this lack of volume right here? Lack of volume. That usually signals one of two things and it's usually the second thing. The first thing that it could signal is it could signal support. It could mean that ah, no more volume here, no more volume right here. We're just gonna pop back up. But when there's a POC below it, what it usually signals is it's gonna slam through that bitch. That there's no orders here. That if it does close below here, we are coming to 20K with speed. So keep that in your mind. Um, I'm gonna get off. I'm gonna get off crypto. We don't need to look at new moving averages. It's below them. It's holding up to 200 in the past. All the 200 holds. It holds. It accumulates and then it goes up. Yes, I know. 
I'm telling people that it's going to go below the 200 moving average. It's going to probably accumulate here and then go up again. Um, how long is it going to take to do that? I have no idea, but once it gets here, that's when I'm putting money. In. All right. Um, and I already did speak about the moon phases in the very beginning. So, uh, my thoughts again on that real quick, since some more people have just came on, the moon phases have been really, I'll just do uh, real, real trippy, right? And, and I don't know how else to really think about it. Um, you can see the, the new moon has called tops and the full moon has called bottoms or accumulation phases. Not perfect, not at all. Um, it's more of like a volatility. It's like when the moon is at full moon, people want to like buy Bitcoin or, or like people want to sell their Bitcoin or, or and then one of them wins. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's very interesting. In, in, in I went kind of into the last cycle and kind of saw it as well. Um, and here are the full moons and then these are the new moons something that you definitely should go look at for yourself i think there's more to it that i have to really i have to really go and um do some research to be honest on that on this because it is a very interesting indicator and it is looking i'm gonna go look what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put the moon faces up and then i'm gonna get a volatility indicator maybe the bollinger band width um or something similar to that that um indicates volatility and I'm going to see how they play out. And I'll get back to everyone on that. But um, it's also looking interesting on the S&Ps and the ad stats. I'm going to not look at it anymore, though, because it's kind of tripping me out. <laughs> I have never, uh, I've never really looked at it. So, um, oh, go back to the see me. OK, let me see. Oh, there's moon cycles. I don't know the difference, but this one is like the one that comes with weeks trading. All right, so the, yeah, full moons are at the bottom. And it's like, I've said this as well. Um, if you're an indicator person, that SME or CME chart of Bitcoin, those indicators are a lot more accurate. And so, yeah, this is quite interesting. I like it on the four hour just because it kind of shows it a little uh, closer, I guess. You can see how this full moon, it, it took a little while. It like had to accumulate low. So you know what's, what I'm gonna look at actually right now? Divergence, I think. Wow. Divergence, like a man. That's so interesting out of here i'm not about to make this whole thing uh, uh a moon face uh, but if, if you've been on here it's been a bit sorry Woo! all right let's get off of that i'm not about to do that right now it's gonna be something i'm looking into though for show for show for show all right ethereum I have to say this after I said everything about Bitcoin. So I analyzed Bitcoin because the Wyckoff theory, once you really understand the Wyckoff theory, what it is, is a whole, it's a whole lot of stuff, but you want to analyze an, an index and then you want to analyze a stock and you want to make sure they line up, right? You want to make sure, you don't want to buy a stock with, if, it, if the overall index is dropping. Bitcoin is like the index of the Ethereum, in my opinion, is like, is the fucking crypto market. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. It's, it, it, in my opinion, I think Ethereum is going to be the most important aspect to crypto until something else more important yeah, gets created, I guess, or until more, until the best developers leave Ethereum and go to these other platforms, I guess. But I don't think that's happening. I think too much money is already invested into Ethereum. This is just, in my opinion, the next, the next guy, the next boy. 
And so saying all that about Bitcoin, me personally, I'm going to be putting all of my chips into Ethereum. And I will have a couple hundred thousand, not <laughs> not a hundred thousand, I'll have a couple of hundreds or thousands into some other smaller projects. And since we talked crypto, let's go look at some real quick. Um, you know, some of these Solana, it, all of them are so down guys. If you haven't, if you're not a crypto person, they're down 80%, almost 90% from their all time highs. If you have money to invest it, some of these, it, and you don't want to worry about catching the bottom and all that shit. And you're here for a longer term. Yes. These are at insanely good prices. Can they drop 50% more? Yes. They drop 75% more. Yes. If Bitcoin drops to 20K, 30, 15K, I mean, with, with, that would be a 50% drop from where it's at right now. These things are going to drop more than 50%. So they can still go lower. XRP, this is something I think it's making a big old accumulation pattern, just like a huge, just ready to see prices we've never seen before. Honestly, and I think it's taking just a long time. The longer something takes to build up, the bigger the, the bigger the move is going to be. Either direction, either direction. Um, but this, they're building a campaign, I believe, for XRP. I think the big money is going to get into XRP, and um, can't get it in America right now. But I think soon uh, i think what's going to happen is that uh sec lawsuit whatever some bad's going to happen with that good or bad i think it's going to drop the market if ripple goes or xrp goes below 20 cents oh my goodness everyone's going to be so pissed off they didn't buy it when it's at five dollars because i do believe xrp can get to five um some of these down here don't buy sheep don't buy doge um We've been saying that forever. Don't buy those. Matic, look into Matic. I'm not telling you to buy any coin, to be honest. Look into Link. Don't buy eight. This is another one that people say that could be similar to XRP. Mana and Sandbox. Those two made humongous runs during the um, during the whole NFT shebang. NFTs are dead right now um, because the market is down, but look for these two. They still have really good uh, projects, uh, really good developers that are working on it. It's just the price of it that it's worth to people is down. And we know fucking price doesn't matter to what things are really worth. Look at Tesla. They make all their money with Bitcoin. Their, their, their company doesn't make much money. Um, okay, and then these are just, you know, 40 to 50. These are all changed probably since the market has dumped recently. Um, and then these are some, uh, you know, everyone can go back and kind of look at some of these. Uh, go back. I have a big list um, of things that I've kind of kept my eye on. E&J, I've kept my eye on that for a long time. Graph, uh, and then some of this stuff kind of helps me. DeFi market cap, everyone was DeFi, 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 and then, um, and now it's only worth like 56 billion. Um, total market cap right now, it hit 3 billion at one point, and now we're sitting at 1.2, so it's, it looks similar to Bitcoin, they, they line up exactly the same, um, you know, if you are a, and I'm going to leave crypto off with this and we're going to go look at some more stuff. If you are a risky person and a risky and, and have money to invest, that's, that's when you kind of want to look into these altcoins. Maybe. If you are more of a sound investor, more of a, um, maybe you don't have a lot of money, but you don't want to be risky either. Like you. You don't want to lose your money either, right? Ethereum and Bitcoin are literally like your, your blue stock, your blue chip stocks. You want to stay with those. 
those are going to be here longer than probably I, the last crypto cycle I was in. Fucking none of these motherfuckers were here. Half of them, more than 75% of them were here. It's all going to change again. But guess who were here? This one was here, this one was here, and this one was here. This one was here. And sadly, that one was. That one was. That one was. You see, more than half of them won. So if you want to make an investment that you don't want to see go away, the top two are your, your, your bag. This is a bag. Litecoin's a bag. Like, those have been there. All right? I'm going to get off my soap opera. Let's get into some... Let's see, what should we look at next? Gold? Everyone loves gold, right? Should we look at stocks? We'll look at stocks later, because no one cares about stocks. Um, yeah, let's look at gold. And I'm gonna bring up uh, just a, let's see, let's see. Why you gotta do all that stuff? Oh, bring up crypto. Let's bring up, let's see how much data this has. Good enough. Okay. So I want to look at a lot of stuff. On gold, we're at these all-time highs, right? Look at that crazy run up it did. Right? You think we're really going to just keep going forever? <clears throat> no, it's not how things work. It's not how things work. All right. So um, we're here at these all-time highs again. We spiked them. And now we're, we're, we're making a move down. If you are a RSI person, you might have been able to spot this divergence right here as we were coming up to the top. This wasn't even close. So in my opinion, I think gold is gonna is, is coming down now. And not in like a bad way, but just like in a cycle way. Um, in like a, in a way like this. And it'll probably get flat right, right around this area before making another move up. Longer term, right? And that's just what it is. Let me see if we can get some uh, <clears throat> some volume into this. No volume on this bitch. All right, so we're gonna get off that one. X, U, T, and we're gonna look at like any of those. We, we don't need more price, it doesn't matter. This one's gonna show me what I wanna see. <laughs> you gotta be shitting. Okay, there's volume on here. That one's just not. I don't know why that wasn't working. Right. We're gonna go to the visible range. I wanna see that. And then I also wanna see some periodic volume. And I wanna hide this guy. And we're gonna check this out. This is a cool new indicator that they have. Um, and. You can choose this guy for that guy. Hold on, yo. Hey, I'm not trading right now. I'm analyzing. One period bar. Okay, perfect. We're gonna put it on a monthly. Um, a monthly. So it's gonna tell me the POC for every month as well. All right, but regardless, the same thing I was talking about for um, Bitcoin when it talks about this volume. Look, a lot of the volume is down here. Okay, a lot of the volume is down here. We're waiting on this to come down, 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 down. If it rips up, I would be pretty skeptical, to be honest. It would need to be like, I know inflation and all this stuff is going on, but um, I... I'm not I'm not 100% on gold making this move up yet. I think, look, we got a good volume node right here. I think this actually might be an area of resistance before we make another move down. Now, if we do break here, we're pretty much guaranteed to come down into that. We're not there yet. We're not even close. So let's get down into like some, some price. And you can see that, I guess that box that I drew disappeared like a mug, huh? You guys are and let's put that on the, let's do that and go to the daily, <clears throat> right? All right, boom, right here. It, it just lines up perfectly. And then yesterday, or uh, last month's volume is actually even right there as well. Last month's volume, you can't even see it because it's, it's fine. 
right here. So if I, I expect the gold to get there, I expect the gold to get there. Um, once it gets there, I kind of expect a drop. I don't think we're going to be making higher highs. Um, and only reason why really is the structure too, right? We, we made this big run up, but then we failed to continue. Why didn't it continue up if it was going to continue up? It failed. And then we broke this low. Why did it break that low if it was going to continue up? It didn't. So structure is telling me that, hey, we're, we're just going to keep going. And I ain't going to get too more complicated about that. Um, we're going to go into the daily. We have a level that we're looking for. We can delete this because this is just showing it right here. It hasn't been tested even. So there's a lot of volume there. It hasn't been tested. And it dropped through it. So, um, you know, I expect probably a move up here on gold to test this volume. And then we're coming back down up. That's what I'm seeing on gold to come up into this level for more of a um, shorter term time frame. Right now, you can see how the price was just dipping, 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 dipping. But the MACD and the RSI was not. So it's kind of showing that this this uh, leg down, it made a couple moves. One, two, three, four, five, you can count like however many you want down. It definitely um, has made its way down. I think we're getting ready to pull back up. Now, if we're talking structure on the lower time frames now for the upside, it looks pretty clean, right? We had these this RSI divergence, MACD divergence on the triple wave. We jumped out of here. Um, you know, we could be coming back down into making this ugly, ugly uh, head and shoulders like this. So um, that's what I'm gonna be looking for on gold, right? I'm gonna be looking for a move back on gold, hope it hope it can retrace. Um, and then, but you know, it's probably gonna stop at this area. I'm surprised, no, I'm not surprised it hasn't stopped yet, but it just blew through that area. So as, it, as it's blowing through these structure points, um, it's looking kind of bullish. You know, we're getting some good momentum, good cross here, good just break of momentum all around. I'm looking for gold to come up uh, into this area. At the least. Right. Once it gets into there, we're probably going to see a pullback and see a head and another inverted head and shoulders there. Um, we got to play that as it goes. No divergence on the 15 minute. This thing is back. In. Right. Um, let's go look at the DXY. The DXY. I got some stuff drawn. We're gonna delete it all. We're gonna check it out. <laughs> all right. There's not a lot of um, data on this dollar. So what I'm gonna do is go over to another. See if we got more. Perfect. All right. So the dollar has pretty much broken this area, you know, um, it broke it. When is it going to get all the way back up to, to here? I'm not sure. Interest rate hikes, so much fundamental bullshit has been driving the market. I'm not a fundamental trader by any means. I'm a chartist. I like to read these candlesticks and momentum, Wyckoff, all that stuff in production in a way what's going to happen with the fundamentals but in times like this when the fundamentals are this heavy right Intr actual interest rate height tightening by the fed when there's like monetary tightening it's it's like your trend line is gonna get murked bro like it is what it is these these conditions are strong. These monetary conditions are strong. Uh, so many people were trying to sell the dollar here on this fib, right at this level, right below the 61.8. A lot, like, look at the supply. It just didn't happen. It's not happening. I don't think it's gonna happen. The momentum is just bullish. It is overbought. Yes, that's what happens in a bullish market. It's overbought all the fucking time. Um, on the weekly, it's stupid overbought, but that's what happens in a bullish market. Look, it's overbought, it's overbought, it's overbought, it's overbought. 
Now, is there going to be pullback? There better freaking be a pullback because there it just hasn't much. There hasn't been much play off the dollar because look, it makes a rally, barely pulls back. It makes a rally, barely pulls back. It makes a rally, barely pulls back. Rally, deep, scary pullback that you think it's going to reverse, but then it rallies again. Baby pullback, rally. So what do we expect? You know, it's probably going to make a baby pullback and then a move up. Uh, it's probably going to cross here. People are going to try to sell it and it's just going to keep going higher. And then there's probably going to be some type of weekly divergence. That's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for weekly divergence to occur, not daily, because this thing is already just, it's, it's, it's slamming. And it's at a level where it should drop, but it ain't. So I'm not going to try to guess the top yet, or not yet, just I'm not trying to guess the top, period. So um, right here, you can see a little bit of divergence starting to finally occur on the daily. I want to see this bitch on the daily. I want to see it on the weekly. We're not going to see it on the monthly unless this takes years to happen. Um, and maybe on the four hour too, you know? But right here, you can see it was kind of coming down while price was coming up. It's done that before, you know, price was flat here. This was flat coming down there. And it's just giving little corrections. It has not formed any type of like big move down. And you can see it right here with this small Bollinger band. We've really just come and connect the middle of the band. Uh, we met the 50 EMA. We haven't reversed. And I don't plan on it reversing yet, like I said. So um, what's most likely going to happen is we're going to get somewhat of a retest around here and then a move up. Okay. Uh, if it breaks this low, we can talk about playing short term. Um, short term moves back to the maybe 200 because it's going to come up like this and break and be good for something. Uh, maybe back into this area where it should actually come to, but we're not going to mess with that. We're going to mess with the, the recent what we got right now. What we got right now is just push, push, push. Um, four hour is actually coming into this 50 EMA and you can see last time it hit and you kind of faked out hit so i mean right here i kind of expect there to be somewhat of a um, reaction coming into the dollar right now and if not here right here for sure on this kind of manipulation move so there's two spots i'm looking at it, it'll all depend on how tomorrow looks i don't trade until we work fully so um, if there is some divergence on the lower time frames as price comes into this, I'm going to expect this to push out. Um, if not, I'm going to expect this to kind of break lower, kind of steal these lows, and then make a move up. Either way, I'm looking for this to come up. If it doesn't, I'll reassess. I will reassess if this gets broken. Until then, I'm bullish on the dollar, meaning I'm bearish everything else. That's what that means, pretty much. Um, so Euro, I'm bearish on this. And this looks, this month right here, the volume is just chilling right here. So if a fib like this, that looks perfect. Uh, my volume settings or my, um, this is just regular volume. I don't have anything special on it. I just changed the color to my color blind ass preference and I took off the moving average that doesn't do anything for me. And then the other volume is, this is the volume profile for the whole screen. So this is gonna show you every like volume for the whole screen. So if I put more candles into the screen, it'll change this. Um, and then this is the new indicator and I just did every, uh, one month, it's going to show me the volume of every month. And I kind of just like seeing that for target purposes um, and just seeing where the price kind of should go to, right? So ultimately, if there's an opportunity, you know, on this correction, we should, we, we could maybe catch a, catch a buy, um, right? And, and it looks 
it looks extremely well in my opinion actually um on the lower time frames a little lower probability right but still um depending on where this thing stops i don't know where it's gonna stop but if it could come back down into this area on this little stop hunt move um then then yeah i think this has a chance to go back up into that oc so i'm gonna mark this off here as a tp and then bring this out a little bit okay even well that works is the bottom of the range so i'll be looking for something like that probably tomorrow still i i don't want to go like dollar bull or a dollar bear i mean which would mean this but uh ultimately price needs to get up here eventually before i can can try to sell it um i like to wait for at the very bare minimum a 61 retracement um really a 70 retracement because if i'm going to the mall my ass is waiting for 70 percent that's how I am. So like, I'm, I'm wait, I do that in trading too, just cause that's my mental. And so I'm waiting for that good price, uh, good volume, then a drop. If we break this range, if it, if we break this range, what that's telling me is that this whole range, this was a spring and we're going to start seeing um, a move out like this. And if we see a strong move, if there is a strong move up, then we'll have to play this move like that. And Ty is just the only way to, we'll have to reverse our bias and buy up to the next range, uh, to the next point of control, which there are some equal highs. So we'll see how that works out. Um, GU is just basically the same thing, right? Um, I'm looking for, I, I missed the opportunity this morning, but uh, I'm not gonna play this right here on this cell, there's no divergence. This is probably going to, to keep going up, breaking these equal highs, then fall. Um, I will be more interested in looking at GU at these prices with the imbalance over here. So wait for those equal highs to get taken, wait for some divergence. Uh, it really all depends on how it gets there. I don't love the way that GU is looking, it's very low with the momentum. It's got this divergence as well here. Four hour is starting to maybe form a lower high. It's not in my interest yet for, um, the reason why I say that is, uh, um, uh, um, the reason why I say that this one versus EU is because EU still has like this distance that I think that it should move up to before I think any type of cells should happen. Um, at, at least right here to the top of the bottom of the range. GU um, has already hit that same bottom of the range area and passed it. And it's very bullish with no divergence it's already in an area where it could just sell off so i don't want to buy it in an area where it could just sell off new um, chef is just going up and up and up and up, and up. i'm waiting for i don't want to sell it i think a good buy could be down here and i don't even want to use the fibs i just want to use demand um and so what i'm going to do is bring in some volume into the picture and I'm just going to show the volume from like here to here, okay? Right now I'm showing volume from here to here and it's telling me that there is a lot of volume right here and there's a lot of volume right here. And you can just see that with the candles, you don't necessarily need volume here on the right. You don't need that. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and let's see a little bit better. Okay, so now I took it away completely down here pretty much. You can see that it's there a little bit. It's not there as much. This is the focus. Um, this is the control. So this will be the highest area of volume. So kind of that. And then 
this is the focus. So what, what it's looking like to me is it's getting ready to kind of come down at this if this doesn't hold like now. Um, I'm not going to play the buy now because this already kind of looks like it's breaking. And if it comes down into this at the same time that the dollar comes down into this, it would be an interesting buy opportunity on Yusha. Um, UJ, I've had this set up here for a minute. I don't know if I'm still going to play it, um, but we'll just look at UJ. UJ is finally maybe getting ready to turn around. It is bullish, right? But we get a weekly candle with some good volume. I'm, uh, it, it's up in the air a little bit, right? It's at this, if it does drop, guys, it's going to drop big. It's going to drop big. And after a big move like that, a lot of people are so bullish still. I don't know. I'm just, after extended moves, I don't play buys anymore. And, and you can kind of see the, the volume here. Like I said, if it breaks here, it's coming down into this. So there's an opportunity for short, in my opinion. Um, if it comes back into this POC, that might be that might be it. That might be a way. Um, you can see how it did kind of break the structure slightly. We'll go down to four. And um, and, all right, we broke structure here. A pretty nice volume candle. And now we've pulled back into a flag. So it's just like a bear flag at this point. There is volume sitting right here at 130, basically. And then the next good chunk of volume is down here. I would probably just take it this just because of how bullish it's been. But the higher time frames are suggesting it can come down into this. So what I'm going to do, UJ has, UJ and the dollar have not even been close to correlating in my opinion. So I'm not really, you know, I'm more of a U chef, U, no, more like U chef, GU and EU. I kind of put with the dollar and then everything else. I really only trade UJ other than that, but everything else, I don't, I don't care that about correlating with the dollar. Gold, I don't care. Um, the cryptos, I kind of care, not really. Uh, indices, kind of care, not really. Um, macro, yeah. Day to day, not so much. So this is a good looking swing on UJ. It has kind of created some liquidity here as well. Um, the momentum is starting to fall down. I think that if it does pop up here though, this momentum will not be diverged anymore. So what I'd have to do is I'd have to wait or some type of double top with divergence. So I'd need to, I would need to see, and this is exactly how I'm gonna play this guys, uh, L or not. Um, I'm gonna wait for price to get into these areas, uh, preferably the 78.6. I need to see the RSI go overbought at that point. So on this move up, it needs to overbought. It needs to get overbought. Wherever it stops for the overbought, and it starts to correct, I'm not gonna sell yet. I'm gonna wait for this thing to get underneath it and then form the divergence. If I see that with this, that is gonna be a pretty good sign for me that we should get some rollover, at least to this zone, at least. So that's how I'm playing UJ. It's more like a longer term, but it's some, I see more high probability that I can explain more, so that's gonna be it a possibility there for sure. EG, uh, these are just the pairs that I trade. I'm maybe looking for a, a setup on EG to the upside. Um, it's looking good with the volume, so I'll explain this one as well. Well, I guess it's gonna be, a, it's, a, it's a long analysis, guys. I'm kind of not sorry for it, but um, let's go over it. Uh, monthly, this is important on EG. So the monthly on EG, it hit a very, break it down. It hit this level on the month, um, 8,300, whatever. This level didn't break. So we're holding it again. I believe it can come back and test, but I believe it's getting ready to go ahead and go. Um, we are at an important level at the, the, 
the, the volume as well. Like if I just put everything in the, we're, we're, we're rejected here, but regardless, I still think we have more room up. We have none down here. So no volume here. There is volume here. I expect the price to go to where the volume is so it can get traded. Um, but now we have some POC to the downside with just this much pricing into the picture. Um, if I bring a little bit more price, it comes up a little higher. So that's what I, I want to see. I want to see it get up into this range, back into the middle of the range really is, is what I'm expecting um, at the very least, middle of the range. Um, so we have a lower high, this didn't break. So that was good. I, I like to see that. And it did kind of break this before that. So there was kind of like a structure shift here. Now I'm expecting it to come back down and make another move up. How low is it going to come down? That's going to be the part that I'm not sure about. And I'm not sure what just happened there. So we got that load. It's going back to DJ. Okay. Because we got a alert no sorry about that um <clears throat> here we go back to eg and it didn't do anything but regardless we'll go to the four hour daily all right so i'm looking for a pullback i don't know how low this is gonna go it could do this thing right here and come back into this or it could just pull back into uh this little area and go um, it's kind of up in the air to be honest. This POC is down here. Man, hold on. A lot of volume to the downside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it. I'm going to be a little safer and wait for it to get down here, most likely. I'm going to mark this area off for a possible scout tomorrow morning. I don't know if this is going to be a good opportunity tomorrow or not. But if price does, it's kind of forming a little bit of uh, accumulation push pattern, giving a test, another test. If it comes up and makes another move down here tomorrow, I might try to scalp something. Uh, but ultimately, I think EG comes down into this area, the uh, more of this area where the POC is for making it to PG is like choppy as hell, right? You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's waving out and it could straight up just Elliott wave so hard right here. Just boom, boom, boom. And then come into that and just take off again. No doubt, like that could play out. But I mean, Elliott wave theory, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, this could be its whole own wave right here, right? I don't even want to say one about it. But I, I think we have a chance to do something like this, okay? And then um, it comes into this. I think it would be something like that. That probably something like this before it makes the move up. So I'm waiting on EG. Seeing a scalp tomorrow, possibly. Let's go to GJ. GJ. Why do you have to do me like this today? I want one of those good profits. I think I broke Okay. GGA on the monthly. Free everything and getting a good month handle. Weekly, it's coming into this area, right? A lot of people are looking for buys right here, not a blend. Um, and it could easily just roar, like roar, for sure. Hit the 70, hit the POC, I mean, this is, this is what you like, want to see in a market that's trending, I guess, technically. Um, you want to see it trend up, go sideways, and then trend up again and then come back into the sideways area and then go up again, right? So um, right here in this area, I'm gonna be looking for some type of bullish divergence. 
Uh, we have a really clean ABC wave right here on a simple to move up and then the A, B, C. It's very symmetrical on the move down. Move down is almost exactly, or this move down is almost the same as that move down. So I'm thinking this is probably going to start to move up. Structure is what's going to need to shift on the lower time frames, really. And I mean, this is ultimately the structure shift that I'm waiting on, this bad boy to shift, because I mean, this could play out easy. And I'm, I mean, it could, this could come and tap the 78.6 again. But with this being so symmetrical like this, um, I, I, it, the odds are it's probably going to continue up. And I did not need to really find the averages. So I'm going to keep this out of here. I don't really use moving averages. And I don't really use trend lines. So, like, I need more than just this, like, break right here. I need it to kind of break the impulse for me to start to look to, to try to buy it. Now, would the smart thing would just be to play the structure to the downside? Most likely, um, most likely you can see right here, there's not a lot of orders probably going to get up here and here, probably reject and come down here. That could happen. But I don't want to play the sell right there. Um, I just don't want to. I see kind of more bullish options with the perfect ABC wave um, to just get ready to pull. I'm, I'm going to be watching. The indices are going to be the last thing I look at. Maybe some stocks, and then I'm going to be done. All right. So the monthly on this Nasdaq, you can see we're finally correct. You've watched my shit for a while. I've been very bearish on these. Um, more bearish than they they have gone even. <laughs> they haven't even gone as much as I thought they would have by now. Um, but yeah, the POC and everything, if guys, if you break any lower than this, um, these things are actually gonna die. So <laughs> I'm I'm not a huge stock guy. I'm more into the crypto because I started, but I understand that the crypto market is not going to make a full run without the stock market. Making a full run. People are not going to invest their money into a speculation like crypto versus something that's a company that is 100% going to make money. So they need to, they, they have to pull up. Um, so um, I am bearish on the stock market and industry still. I do think we're gonna still get like maybe another run up and then a move down. Maybe one, two, three, four, five. I don't care about Elliott wave theory, but the wave count kind of more or less is, is more important than, than anything. And just like the symmetrical again, this this is just it's lining up too too nicely. We did have like a, a really good fall here and then a very like ABC pattern and it's very symmetrical. It could hold here and we could bore here. That's just not how I'm feeling with all the tightening policies and everything, right? I think we're going to get a pullback. I think there's going to be a good rally, right? There's, there's some divergence here, right, on the RSI. Uh, we're flat here and price has been making lower lows. So there's a possibility for a rally up, but once we get into these prices, I'm expecting a drop. And volume is there to support. So um, bullish, maybe short term, just because I want prices to get up there. Am I gonna try to play it on margin? Probably not. Um, if I do, it'll be this. It'll be this area down in here that I wait for. So I'm gonna turn on the monthly volume and see. Yeah. Right into it. So if we dip below the monthly volume POC, we're probably gonna come back into it at least. We're probably gonna have to make lower lows. So I'll be expecting that. There's too much liquidity here. There's too much liquidity here. There's too much liquidity here for me to think that the price is not going to go back up. 
it's just kind of um with saying that it's kind of risky to try to uh, just hasn't made a higher high yet so this would be almost like trying to predict the bottom of the stock market and most people can't do that uh, everything else is the exact same so i'm not even gonna um, look at the s p or the uh or the uh us 30 they're the same they look the exact same waiting for there's a liquidity that i'm waiting for it to get up to it's got the inverted head and shoulders that um people are gonna want to buy and i don't blame them it's looking pretty okay right so price can dip down into this make this shoulder it's probably going to be a good a good position I'm not gonna lie so i'm waiting for that on all these guys it's gonna do the same thing on the nasdaq um come down into like this Inverted. I know people love patterns, so I like to show them as well. I just feel only trade patterns. But um, yeah, we'll see if that can happen for a little move up into this area. We do have the balance of liquidity and all that jazz up here, so that would make sense. That would make sense. Um, a lot of these stocks are down pretty heavy. Um, I think Microsoft is about to uh, break and retest uh, an area. I don't know if it's going to but um, Microsoft is down pretty heavy. It came into this demand area, but I think we're about to, to slip lower. Everything I think is about to slip lower into pre-COVID prices. Um, I guess there's no reason for the stocks, really. That's it, guys. Uh, do y'all have any? The people who are on, do y'all have any pairs that y'all want me to look at um, throughout the market? I, those are really the only things that I personally trade. And I want to you know, look at everything in the market. I want to take my time. I want to do everything. Um, and I have a pretty good idea of what I think is going down right now, what we're time framing up, um, which would make it easier, easy for me to look at any, any market to guys. So, that is it. I'm going to stop the recording so everyone else can see what's good.